jobs in healthcare were always for someone had disease. So it was not preventative, really. I was always in uh, with patients that were already ill. So the medicines, the procedures, the surgeries that we did really were to help the symptoms to be better, to go away, but we never really had curing of the disease. You know, it was rare that someone was cured of a disease. And so with those things, the medicines and other treatments, there's always side effects. You always have to look at the benefit risk of what we can do for patients. And so, because medical care, although we have some great medical care in the US, it can't do everything um, once you already have disease. So I'm really honored when I'm able to speak with people, help others, as well as remind myself about the different lifestyle behaviors that can maintain or improve one's health. And they, it does that by preventing or even reversing disease. So I'm very ha happy to uh, get to do that today as I read out the presentation. Now, I would like to say a few words about Dr. Hans Diehl. He's the main speaker that we see in the video, the CHIP videos. And talk about him and CHIP just a little bit, to, just to give some background. So Dr. Diehl is actually a founder of the Lifestyle Medicine Institute. He is a new lecturer throughout the world. And as you know, he believes very much that healthy lifestyle is really about choices that we can make ourselves. He's also the founder of CHIP. So CHIP being the Complete Health Improvement Program. So he actually found that back in 1988. And so CHIP was really in the forefront of lifestyle medicine and the whole plant-based movement. And CHIP, the program has been well, CHIP does say program at the end. CHIP has been uh, done by tens of thousands of people and has helped them improve their health. And that is demonstrated, or there is data on that, in over 40 different publications in peer-reviewed journals. You can go out and search for, for CHIP uh, manuscripts or CHIP, or CHIP publications, and there's much data to support it. So I wanted to add that both myself and my other co-health ministry leader, Kim Casey, we were both have been certified as facilitators for the CHIP programs, and we have done those before here at the church and also in, in the other areas of Indianapolis. The full program is lasts about 12 weeks. So what we're doing here is we're showing a little bit of a shortened version of the videos and not doing all the activities that are many time associated with the CHIP. But I wanted to point out that if you look at CHIP, if you Google it, you want to put PIVIO in front of it now, so where it says PIVIO CHIP, because PIVIO is an organization that is now collaborating with CHIP, and it's still the same program, but they're just going to make it an even stronger, um, stronger program. They're going to be updating some of the education things. But if you're interested in some videos or some other resources, articles, if you Google for PIVIO chip, you get a lot more information than if you just Google for chip. So I just wanted to call that to your attention. And then I'm just going to spend a, a couple minutes, a few minutes, to review a little bit of what we talked about, Dr. Kelly and Dr. Deal talked about on Sunday. And if you recall, he talked about the optimal diet. And you can see on the slide here, it talks about what should you eat less. We want to eat less of fats, oils, sugars, those foods that contain cholesterol, which is essentially animal, animal meat and the animal products, salt, alcohol, and caffeine. And then you can just freely eat a wide variety of uh, foods as grown, so your plants, right? So the whole grains, the fruits, vegetables, the tubers, which are your root vegetables, and the beans, which are beans, lentils, peas, like that. And then you want to drink water, 
You want to drink water. Water should be our main beverage. A lot of the beverages that are out there now are pretty high caloric. So, and 70% or more of our body is made out of water, so we need to replenish that. And we also talked about eating a hearty breakfast. So breakfast should really be the biggest meal of the day. Get, that, get your calories, get that food in there so that you'll have that for the rest of the day and you want to eat your smallest meal at the end of the day so you, your stomach doesn't have as much to digest as when you go to bed. And try to eat, you know, more than three hours before you decide to get, to get in bed. So I just wanted to talk about that. And, you know, we're all on a different place with trying to get to the optimal diet. So some of us, you know, we're just not all the same. And I, there's not one thing that I just say, eat this, this, and this. You've got to look at it and do things to help better your health. Like for me, fats and oils are very, I'm very sensitive to that. I have a family history of people and my family have high cholesterol. So if I get, if I eat much of that at all, it really sets, sets my cholesterol rate up. So you just have to, again, individualize it to yourself, but kind of just keep trying to move more and more to the green side of the optimal diet. But why? So why do we care about it? Why, why do we keep talking about it? Well, you live longer and you're healthier. And when I say that, healthier, think about as we mature in our age, that we don't want to be bothered or have chronic diseases that with their, their uh, symptoms and side effects from the medicines that maybe you have to take, your life maybe isn't so great and, and maybe not as fun. So it really helps you live longer and healthier, helps you maintain a healthy weight, and then lowers the risk of, of life, <clears throat> lifestyle diseases. In the United States, when you look at the top 10 diseases that cause death, seven of those, the risk factors for those has to do with nutrition, as well as some other things, but nutrition really plays a big part in these lifestyle diseases. Your uh, optimal diet can actually prevent and reverse heart disease. And I brought this book with me, Dr. S.O.T. Jr. It says prevent and reverse heart disease. This has been out for quite some time. They referred to it in a video on Sunday, but it's true. There's so much data there. Also looking at the China study, which Dr. Kelly and I think Dr. Beal as well talked about previous to now. It really does make a difference. So it'll prevent reverse heart disease, also type 2 diabetes, obesity, decreases cholesterol, blood pressure, your blood sugar, and inflammation, which in turn, that impacts and decreases the risk for kidney disease, for uh, cancers, for also uh, stroke and asthma. So if you eat optimally, you can eat more and weigh less, and I'm going to let uh, Dr. Gill talk to you about that now. So I just need to get the video started here. Perhaps. Here we go. Okay. After 25 years of dieting, said a survey, the prevalence of obesity in America has doubled. Sounds like a long time to me, doesn't it? Listen to this. Two out of three Americans are now overweight and obese, and the spread is going around the world. Yeah, but I also have some good news for you. Actually, two times good news. Number one, if you want to be a winner in the losing game, you've got to eat more. And number two, if you're overweight, don't blame yourself any longer. Hmm. Eat more? Don't blame yourself? Hey, how am I doing? Am I doing all right so far? Or do you think I'm setting a trap for you? Nah, I wouldn't do that, would I? 
Well, just relax. Relax and listen carefully. This is not the time for you feeling guilty. This is a time for you to begin on your new path to the new you. You see, I believe you have become victimized by a society that says, eat, drink, and be merry, and tomorrow you can diet. It's the ultimate tease. We feel trapped in a calorie-crazy culture that worships slimness, but seduces us at every turn with fattening food. Stay slim, says the culture, or nobody will love you. You won't even love yourself. But then it rolls out its irresistible banquets. It's virtually impossible in our culture to stay slim. Wherever we go, we're tempted and seduced with taste sensations that no one can resist and serving sizes that no one can ignore. We're brainwashed at the supermarket with prepackaged food, at restaurants and drive-ins with pre-cooked meals, and even hospitals and churches often fall short in providing healthy meals. All you have to do is pick up a woman's magazine and the contradictions hit you right between your eyes. You find articles that emphasize slimness, but as you turn the page, you find fattening recipes for romance, for elegant dining, and for a coronary. Overweight. You know it rarely happens overnight. It usually comes on gradually. It turns into a long-term problem. Now, what's the normal knee-jerk reaction? Go on a diet. Too many. People in search of help fall prey to these virtues of misery who offer quick fixes for long-term problems through quick remedies and serum starvation diets. Most of these quick fixes are built on the principle of monotony and fruit restriction. And of course, with such restrictions, their weight comes down temporarily. But how long can you stay on such a crazy, monotonous diet? You're doing like this going up and down, up and down, constantly losing and gaining and losing and gaining. It's frustrating, it's demoralizing, it's sour grapes for some and serious psychological scars for others. Let me be very clear. If you want to be successful in weight management, then let all diets die. Diets have no place in a successful long-term strategy. You don't want to go on a diet. Because if you're going to diet, then you must go off that diet. No, no. You don't need a new diet. You need a new lifestyle. That's the secret. The secret of success, then, is to adopt a dietary lifestyle that will keep you healthy, that will give you more energy, that will lower your risk of chronic disease, that allows you to eat until you're satisfied and still lose one to two pounds a week, up to one kilo, without ever being hungry. Impossible, you think? Well, ask those chippers. They will tell you, they'll tell you, we ate for health without any restrictions and the scale to care of itself. But in general, excess weight accumulates when food calories, those kilojoules, exceed the energy requirements of the body for physical activity and metabolism. So, excess weight accumulates when energy in is more than energy out. Now, if we completely utilize all our food for fuel and maintenance, then our weight would just stay the same. But if it is not all used and there are calories left over, then they'll be deposited in our central fat bank, right in our midsection. And when that central fat bank overflows, it sets up branch offices in often embarrassing areas. Yeah, that's when we start worrying. Did you know that by having 100 extra calories every day, you will have deposited 10 extra pounds or five kilo at the end of that year? But if you want to lose, cut your calories. But what do you think do most weight loss programs recommend? What do they recommend? They recommend eat less food and exercise more. Our chip winning formula for losing weight is different. We recommend eat more food by decreasing the calorie intake. And here's the secret. All you have to do is build your food plan more around whole plant foods. They're high in bulk, they're high in water, they're high in nutrients, but they're low in calories. And it's the fiber and the water in these foods that will prevent you from overeating. 
you can eat until you're full and satisfied and still lose one to two pounds a week or up to one kilo. But let's also look at the many reasons why we eat. It's obviously not just for reasons of hunger. Actually, most of it is habituation with many external cues. But it also involves a lot of emotions. You know, some people eat for loneliness and boredom. Other people eat to express their joy and to celebrate. And yet others eat to drown their disappointments or to find solace. Pacifiers. Chip. Really. Is it not a temporary diet for some weight loss? I want to get this across. Instead, chip is a healthy lifestyle. A healthy lifestyle for the rest of your lives. Here's the simple chip five-point formula of how to be a winner in the losing game. Point number one, reduce processed and engineered foods. Because processed and engineered foods tend to be high in sugar, oil and fat, and low in nutrients, fiber and protein. They get you nowhere but overweight. The volume is small, but the calories are high. We call them energy-dense foods. And because they deliver very few nutrients, we call them also empty calories. The classic examples are sugars, fats and oils, and alcohol. All small in volume, but high in calories and short of nutritional density. Let's take a closer look at sugar. Any idea of how much sugar a family with two teenagers in America eats in one week? Let's take a look. Here you have four and a half pounds of sugar. Four and a half. This is what a family of four eats every week. Four and a half pounds. And I just realized my bowl is too small. I have another three and a half pounds here, which really doesn't fit in here. Look at this. This is what we eat in America family of four every week. That's about 3.5 kilos every week. And then it comes to 30 teaspoons of sugar per person per day. 30 teaspoons of sugar per person per day, which is about twice as much as what the United Nations and the World Health Organization recommend as an upper limit for society in general. And it's also three times the amount of what chip recommends. So 30 teaspoons of sugar, it's too much. Just think, 30 teaspoons of sugar a day for every man, woman, and child. And since I personally don't take that much sugar, some Americans must be taking my share as well. But it also means that some 16% of all the calories we eat come from sugar as a totally empty calorie. You know, while some of the sugar is used for some fruit flavored drinks, 33% of all the sugar is being used as well. Let's take a look. That's how we use it. We take um, uh, a glass of water and then we add uh, some 10, 11 teaspoons of sugar. Then we add some chemicals and some fizz. And this is what we call a soft drink. That's America's favorite drink. 150 empty calories, no nutritional value, just calories. And America leads the world in this soft drink consumption. As a matter of fact, an average family of four would purchase 30 to 12 ounce cans of sugar rich soft drinks every week. But you know, there's sugar everywhere. I mean, look at the donut. Study it. Study it as if you were an anatomist. And then, Aim for the whole, because that won't do any harm. And then look at that banana split, 25 teaspoons of sugar. And look at that pre-sweet cereal, which is often nothing more than candy that comes with the name cereal. Where at times, half the calories in that box actually come from sugar, and where fiber and nutrients of the original grain have been oftentimes completely stripped away. Aside from the sugar and its calories, we want to also be vigilant about the use of alcohol and about fats and oils. As you may know, every gram of sugar is a rather concentrated and small volume. 
when each gram of sugar carries four calories, alcohol carries seven calories per gram. And by the way, in case you're wondering, the amount of pure alcohol in a glass of beer is about the same as in a glass of wine and in a shot of liquor. But look at fats and oils. Here, every gram has nine calories per gram. The most constant calories of any food item. And look how easily these oils increase the caloric load while adding virtually nothing to the nutrient content. Take, for instance, a baked potato. You know, it comes out of the oven, it's 115 calories. And then what do we do? We make the decision to open up that nutritious spot. And what do we do? We add all kinds of things. We add butter and sour cream and bacon bits and cheese and turn this nutritious spot into a caloric grave. Yeah, but look what else we can do with it. I mean, I can turn this potato also into 700 calories of French fries or into 1,000 calories of potato chips. Now look at this. What would take you longer to eat? These thousand calories, or would it be these thousand calories? These are ten potatoes. Yeah. Well, of course, people say, well, but they just don't taste the same. Well, I guess they don't. They're good. And, but you know, you only take one. I don't mean one at a time. I mean one, period. Be careful. These are loaded. Or you can also look at nine ounces of corn chips. They represent 1,440 calories. There's also 90 grams of fat. I mean, most of us perhaps would be much better off having less than 45 grams for the whole day. This alone is 90 grams. The more oil is used for food refinement, the higher the caloric concentration or the energy density. Just by adding some butter or sauce to cook vegetables, we can actually easily double and triple the calories. Or take a look at what we do with bread. Here you have a white slice, thin slice of bread. Yeah, it has virtually no shape. I mean, look at this, it, it, it's, it's amorphous. Uh, we can do anything with it until we put it into a toaster. And now we can stabilize it. And when it comes up, now it's dry and it's stable, but we also want it moist, so we add 150 calories of margarine. The next thing we do, we add peanut butter. Well, it's a fine product, uh, that's a bit on the high side perhaps in terms of uh, the fat content, 75% of its calories come from fat, but now the peanut butter might actually stick to our dental plate. So what do you have to do? We cover it with jam to make it slide down the shoe easier. Yeah, and now it comes, a caloric bomb of 350 or more calories. And then you say, well, I can't eat bread, it's fattening. No, 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 it's, it's not the bread. It's the extras that do it. Here's another example, take an apple. If we would eat apples as they come from the tree, we would have no problems with calories. But we love to dose them with sugar, don't we? and to make applesauce, dumping the calories, or we squeeze out the juice, removing most of the fiber, and concentrating the calories even more, or turning them into an apple pie. As you see here, just imagine that this is a la mode. That special ice cream is on top there, but also you have here now 500 calories. 500 calories. And actually, it has become a nutritional disaster. Think about that. 500 calories in one piece a la mode. But you say, oh, but it's so good. But you know, somehow you pay for it, one way or the other. Just think of how many apples you could have eaten. And that's exactly the point. You would have to eat six apples to reach that 500 calorie level and 12 apples to reach that 1,000 calorie level. And you know, you couldn't do it. I mean, you probably couldn't even eat two or three. And that's the point. What makes it so easy to overeat calorically are these engineered and processed foods that are often also relatively low in nutrition. 
is not only the sugar, but especially the oil and fat, which comes in such concentrated forms. When it comes to fat, we have butter and margarine, the shortening and mayonnaise, the salad dressing and cooking oils. Actually, most plants contain very little fat. It's really modern food technology that makes everything possible because what they do, they chemically remove these natural intrinsic fats in these foods and then process them into oil. You know, I want you to think about something. Next time, when you see a tablespoon of corn oil with 125 calories, think of 14 years of corn. That's 14 years of corn that had to be processed to produce one tablespoon of oil. I know how easy it is to take in this tablespoon of corn oil because I've never done it by eating the original corn for 14 years. And remember, every gram of fat and oil has nine calories per gram. Listen carefully. Here's a bombshell. And that's the same for lard, for corn oil, and for double virgin olive oil. How about snacks? Well, actually, the calories gained from snacks and beverages can add up big time. Let me show you. Here, take a look at this list of snacks at mid-morning. Some coffee and donut, some soft drink and candy. And then at mid-afternoon, some coffee and cookies, and then a tea snack at home. Well, some soft drink, maybe some potato chips. An amazing, listen to this, an amazing 1,445 calories. And you haven't even counted the calories from today's meals yet. Just think, some people eat more calories in snacks and beverages than they eat all day in real food. So be careful. Be careful with snacks. The larger the snacks, the larger the slacks. It happens every time. What about nuts? You know, unsorted nuts are a pretty healthy and nutritious snack option, really. Just watch the portion size, will you? I mean, look at this. Just one cup of mixed nuts, as you see here, is equal to 13 slices, as you see here, of multi-grain bread. This is the same number of calories. Do you know how much you have to walk to walk off these calories that you see in these nuts and also in these 30 slices of bread? You have to walk eight miles or 13 kilometers. That's about three hours of walking. So if you want to be successful in the battle of the barge, here's question number one, reduce processed and engineered foods because they are loaded with calories and they're usually low in nutrients. Here's question number two. Reduce animal products. When you look at meat, don't think any longer protein. Think fat. To illustrate this, take a look at this 16 ounce Angus Porterhouse steak. That's almost a half a kilo. This is 1,200 calories with about 80 grams of fat. Now let me do the math with you. You have 80 grams of fat times 9 calorie per gram. That's 720 calories from fat, all of a total of 1,200, which means 60% of that steak is fat and 40% is protein. So when you think meat next time, think fat, right? And this is even more true for sausages. I mean, the hot dog is about 85% calories from fat. And because the fat is so well hidden, many people don't realize that meat and dairy products average from 50 to 85% of its calories as fat calories. But unless we significantly cut back on these high calorie products, it will be next to impossible to win in the losing game. And here's now principle number three. Eat more. Uh -huh. I've been waiting for this for a long time. <laughs> yeah, eat more. Whole food. Because the calories are low and the nutrition is absolutely out of this world. When we think of whole food, 
we think of the four preferred food groups, such as fresh fruits, vegetables, whole grains, and legumes like beans and lentils, and you can add some nuts and perhaps some flax seed every day. These fruits then, these whole foods are really filling because of the high fiber and water content because of the bark. So you can eat until you feel full and satisfied. No more worries about serving sizes and pushing away from the table. You have now foods that will maximize the tithing, refresh your body with enhanced nutrition, and facilitate desirable weight loss. You know, our team has put together a few food comparisons to perhaps illustrate the difference in bulk and in terms of volume. Take a look at this. Which would give you greater satiety? Would it be this iced coffee with milk and ice cream? Or would it be the 700 calories that you find in this food and soy milk? Amazing, isn't it? So how about this? Look at this hamburger. Here you have about 977 calories. Or would it be 977 calories that you see in this plate here? Which would give you greater satiety? Which would fill you up? Could you even eat that much? And here's a good grass, which would fill you up even more. Here you have five chocolate cookies. Doesn't look like very much, but it's about 312 calories. Or you can have seven large slices of watermelon. Look at this. Which would fill you up more? Got the point? Well, we're just about done. Let me just uh, perhaps add two more principles. Principle number four. Put your best foot down one at a time and then the next. And by the end of the program, you will have gone into the habit of a 30-minute walk a day. But listen, we don't want you to do this to burn calories. No. We want you to exercise because it is the right thing to do. It makes you feel good. And then you have principle number five, the last one. Tie into emotional and spiritual and social resources. Join the group of people who are working together. Have a friend, have a buddy. So to summarize, the principal cause of overweight is not overeating, but the reliance on heavily marketed, calorically dense food. Food that has been stripped of its nutrients and fiber and filled with empty calories from fats and sugar. No wonder many of us are overfed and undernourished. Today's important lesson then is a concept that it's not the amount of food that we eat, it's how densely the calories are packed. As we now place greater reliance on whole foods, this then will allow us to increase the variety of our foods, eat larger quantity of food, have greater satiety from the food, have a lower food bill, and reduce our waistline by increasing our lifeline. It enable us to reverse and prevent many of our modern diseases and to reduce our medical costs to boot. With Chip, we can enjoy more food, lose weight, and find a new life. So as Dr. Deal said, it's not, sorry, I have to show you all my pictures here. It's not um, how much food we eat, right? It's how packed with calories that food is, right? How dense it is. I mean, we are bombarded in our world you know, with all of this really densely caloried food that all the nutrients have pretty much been stripped out of it, the fiber, and then they put this tasty combination of fat and sugar together, so of course we want to eat it, right? But, but foods that have a lot of water and a lot of fiber and little fat are usually really low in calorie density. So you can eat a lot of it and then fills you up. And so I want to show you this picture. It came out of one of the chip workbooks that I think really it shows a good example of it. So you've seen this in this stomach up here, you've got 1.6 ounces of olive oil. Okay, I should say all these stomachs have 400 calories. 
So there's hardly anything in there at all, and that's 400 calories. We look at this next one. This is roasted, not fried, but roasted chicken drumsticks. 7.6 ounces, 400 calories. Your stomach isn't even half full. Look at that. Full, full of whole plant foods. It's spinach, eggplant, and beans in there. Two and a half pounds. So when you look at these three, which one makes you feel more full, right? The one with the whole plant foods, with the, the vegetables and the beans in it. So I just thought it was a good illustration to kind of you know, show what they were saying, that these <clears throat> and the calories are, you know, 400 calories in all of it, you get so much more for calories. So I wanted to just real quick run through these five principles. I'm hoping I'm going to run through them. Um, the five principles that he brought out about how to win at losing. And I think, you know, it makes sense, right? Newbies would not have processed and engineered foods because they're energy dense, empty calories. And I thought it was interesting, you know, we know we want to reduce the animal products, but you know how we normally have always said, oh, you eat your meat, get your protein, but what meat is made of more of what? Fat, right? Mm -hmm. So again, eat those whole plant foods, your veggies, your fruits, legumes and nuts. And how much did he say to exercise a day? Essentially walking is 30, right? It's not that much. And you can count it like, um, you know, park your car kind of far away. I walk 10 minutes to my car. So you can add that 10 minutes, which later when you go back to your car, you get another 10 minutes and then you get 20. So you can kind of build it up that way. And then tie in to emotional, spiritual, and social resources. And I think that that is also really important. Before um, we had limited options to go and exercise during the pandemic, I had a friend, and she and I would every morning early ride together to the gym to do our workouts. And it was really nice to have the buddy system because sometimes I didn't really feel like it, but then she did, or and vice versa. And so you kind of have that other person to motivate you and or hold you accountable. And also, I think the, the chip, those programs, are helpful too because these are always done in a group setting. And then you get, you can make new friends or you go with friends that you have, but then that kind of reinforces that as well. So I'm going to put a little plug in now, a little advertisement. We'll talk more about it later. But here at the church, starting in June, we're going to do another health program, which will run, will actually run from, there'll be six weeks where we meet every week. We'll have, we'll have a dinner. We'll learn some things. We'll do some cooking demonstrations. But we will be there to help people set goals and to become moral support as well. I think that it was, it was always very helpful. And then we'll continue to meet monthly after that. But I'll tell you more about that later, but it, it is helpful. I think that we probably have all found that. And I wanted to share a couple of scriptures, um, which really say, do all to the glory of God, and that includes eating. So in 1 Corinthians 10.31, it says, therefore, whether you eat or drink, or whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. And 1 Corinthians 6, 19 and 20 says, or do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, who is in you, whom you have in God, and you are not your own, for you are bought at a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. And he's always there, you know, for us too, if you get demotivated or, or stressed about what's happening, he's always there to support you and give you that peace and comfort that only he can provide. So um, the next, I'm happy to answer any questions. I know we just have a few minutes. I don't know. This is all, I think, things that we probably know. I think it's just trying to keep it in our minds and think about why do we eat, why do we eat this or that, and, you know, kind of just keep it in the forefront and think about it. But if you don't have any questions, I will tell you tonight we have food samples again, taste samples. And what uh, we did tonight is Carmen, 
She's got some nice whole foods, plants. She's got some nice veggies cut up. And then she made a nice dressing. And she'll have a recipe for the dressing, but she used a coconut-based yogurt, put some dill in it, some other spices. I actually had to sample it beforehand to make sure it was okay. <laughs> it was really delicious. So she has those again if you go out to the left. And you just want to give that a little sample. So I'm going to just leave us a, a little quick prayer before we go get our samples in. If we can bow our heads. Dear Holy Father, first of all, we thank you for the many things that we learn just studying your Bible. And help us to make the better decisions of what we eat, what we do for our health, because we want to be healthy for you. We ask that you keep us safe, especially in this weather as we travel with us and our families. And we thank you for Jesus that you sent here for us. And we pray all this through your son Jesus. Amen. Amen.